Yo, what is going on everybody? Dan Trimpty here and welcome back to my tutorial series, Browser Noise. This is tutorial number two and before we start making buttons for our noise generator, what I first, I first want to say a few things. If you haven't already, please do make an account with this web editor because it's going to allow you to save your sketches. You can link it to your GitHub account if you have one of those. You can also change, you know, the theme. So I have this nice dark contrast theme. Um, so so uh, please do that. Next, since we'll be using P5.js as our general purpose audiovisual environment and gateway into Tone.js and the Web Audio API, we're going to be talking a lot about it and we'll be working within many of these P5.js conventions. So for example, we have a setup function over here and inside that, that's, that's a P5 object. Inside that, we'll be doing most of our initializations and we'll have a draw function down here for animations and frame-based events. Um, and just to get started to talk about one of these conventions, I like to do all of my global declarations up front before the setup function. And then I go ahead and do my global assignments inside of the setup function like this. Then once we start transitioning into Tone.js, we will continue to use P5.js conventions, as you'll see. So inside the setup function, we'll set Mrs. Noisy equal to a new tone dot, uh, it's called a noise synth dot to master. And then, uh, so this isn't gonna work because we haven't linked to the tone.js library yet. So, but just know that this is the sort of thing that we'll do in the future when we get to tone.js. Anyways, let's undo out of that and go ahead and start with our task of the day, which is to make some on and off buttons for our noise generator. And I know what you're probably thinking is, hey, we already have on and off buttons. They're right here. And uh, you're totally right. Uh, but the thing is, is that these are on and off buttons for the editor. And these aren't going to show up if you take this code and write it in your personal website. In fact, you should assume that when your site loads with this code, it's equivalent to actually going ahead and hitting this run button. So in other words, we have code that just autoplays noise when the site is loaded which is categorically the worst kind of site. I think you and I agree. So let's fix this. First thing we're going to do is comment out Mr. Noisy dot start so that noise doesn't start when we load the page. And we might as well also go ahead and comment out the create canvas. Next, let's go ahead and declare a variable called play button. And we are going to set play button equal to create button, open close parentheses, and we're going to want the button to display a word on it, and that word is going to be play. So we're gonna pass in the string called play. Now when we run it, you'll see there's a button. Uh, let's go ahead and stop that, and let's try to set the position of the button to the coordinate 10, 10. So when you call the position method on a P5 DOM element, like the button, uh, you can pass in two arguments. And the first one is going to be the X coordinate. And then the second one is going to be the Y coordinate. And this is from the top left corner. So when I hit play, now it's 10 pixels in from the left, 10 pixels down from the top. Uh, go ahead and play with different coordinates like 50 over from the left, 10 from the top. But for now, let's go ahead and just put 10 and 10. So we hit the run button. Now we have a perfectly positioned play button. And when we click the play button, nothing happens. It's obvious to us what that play button should do, but it's not like the browser is going to be like, I see what you're up to. You want that play button to trigger the noise. So we need to be explicit. We need to define what happens when that button is pressed. 
And the way to do that is we're going to say play button and then we're going to add an event listener called mouse pressed. So what goes inside our mouse pressed is a little bit more complicated than the sorts of things that we've passed into methods before, like a string or a number or a pair of numbers. What we actually want to put inside our mouse pressed is a function that fires when the button is pressed. So the function that we want to put inside mouse press is going to be one that we define. So let's go ahead and make up a name for it. Something like start the noise. Now that we have that name, we can go ahead and define our function by typing the following function start the noise, open, close parentheses, then open and close curly braces. And what we want our function to do is call the command Mr. Noisy dot start. So now when we run the sketch, we have a button. Now when we press the play button, we have noise. Amazing. Okay. Uh, now, of course, we need a stop button. So we don't have to rely on these editor buttons. So uh, we're just going to go through the, the entire process that we just did to make our play button. Only now we can, of course, copy and paste. So let's go ahead and copy and paste our declaration for the play button and change it to stop button. Okay. Now let's go ahead, drop down to here, grab these three lines of code, press copy, and then hit enter twice, press paste. Okay. And here's, here's a pro tip. Let's go ahead and select play button, hit command D, command D, or control D, control D if you're on PC, I think. I don't know, I haven't tested. <laughs> but now that all three of these play buttons are selected, let's go ahead and call them all stop button. All right, and now we're gonna change the word play to stop. We are going to change the position to 10 pixels to the right, 30 pixels from the top. And then we are going to call a function called stop the noise. And then let's go ahead and drop down to the bottom, copy and paste that function. And wherever it says start, we say stop. Boom. And then down here, stop. All right. Let's see if this works. Run the sketch. We have two buttons. One is called play, one is called stop. When I press play, oh yeah, we got noise. When I hit stop. So I know what a lot of you are thinking. What is this, 31 lines of code and this is all it does? <laughs> this is pretty pathetic uh, of, a, of a web audio app. So, um, so let's tighten this up. First of all, anything that we've commented out is not really lines of code that should count towards that count. So let's just get rid of all of that right now. So delete anything that we had commented out and then let's run it again. It still works. Okay. Next, we can actually do all of our declarations in one line of code. And in fact, I do this a lot. So I'll just delete the let's and then put replace them with a comma. And now all of our declarations is one in one line of code. Let's run that. Still works. Okay. We don't need this line of code actually, because we can go ahead and set the type by passing in that string directly into our noise object when we first assign it. So we can get rid of that line of code. Let's run it, play, stop, and notice it's still brown noise. Very good. Next, and this one's a big one. We have these event listeners. One is called start the noise, and it refers to this global uh, function called start the noise. And another one refers to a global function called stop the noise. And um, this idea of referring outwards to global functions could totally make sense for what you are doing. Maybe you want to have something else that triggers the start the noise function, in which case you'll want these to be global functions. But in our case, we don't need to do that. We can make these local. I'm gonna actually go ahead and cut 
that function out completely and replace my start the noise referral with that function, okay? And then I'll do the same thing with the stop the noise. And now um, I'm gonna hit shift tab to beautify it and make, the, make it properly indented or whatever. And now I'm gonna hit the run button and then the play button and then the stop button and everything is lovely, awesome. And now that they are local functions, we can make them anonymous. We don't have to give it a name called start the noise. We can just delete that name. Boom and boom and hit run, play, stop. It still works amazingly. I'm just, I'm just going to keep going, okay? So here's the thing. There's a more concise way of defining functions and that's using what's called arrow functions. You don't have to do this, but just know that you can get rid of the word function and just put this little arrow over here and do the same thing down here. Arrow over here, hit run, play, stop, it works. You can um, go ahead and get rid of all of the space in between because you don't need it. Boom, and hit run, play, stop, it still works. And you can keep going. I know it's starting to get a little ridiculous, like how far can we minify this thing? Well, first of all, when we create our buttons, we can actually go ahead and in the same line, set the position by just chaining methods on our DOM element. Let's look at that, boom. Now, the entire process of creating the button, setting its the word on it to display play, positioning it at 10 and 10, and then defining what happens when you press it, that's all in one line of code. And you could do the same thing with the stop button, needless to say, and boom. And now we are at the point where we actually have less than 10 lines of code. And it, it, that's, actually kind of seems a little more reasonable than having 30 whatever lines of code to make these two little buttons. Okay. Uh, uh, just to show, just to show, don't do this, but just to show, we can put it all into one line of code. Okay. And it still works. But why would you do this? I can't even read it. You'd have to scroll and stuff. So undo out of that. <laughs> it, it becomes completely unreadable. What you want to do is actually strike some sort of balance between concise and readability. And, and in my case, I actually prefer to, you know, separate certain things out for, for my own mental uh, stability. Like, for example, here... This is a noise object, which is very different than a DOM element. So, so for me, I like to parse those things out and I'd even actually add a lot of lines, a lot of comment lines, such as this is where we um, assign and we'll use that and initialize our p5 sound object and then this is where we assign and init our buttons boom so so if i were to write this it would probably have which i did <laughs> it would have about 12 lines of code to make this little noise stop and start app that runs in your browser I'll see you in the next one later.